thought I would make a video on how to uh, check your ignition timing on one of these uh, 88 to 95 trucks because 96 is going to be a little different, the Vortex. But um, the set timing connector, I'll show you where that is. Sometimes I don't need to hold in earlier models, like a 93, 94, maybe a 95, something to the dash. First of all, you have to gain entrance to your truck, and as you see, it's a little difficult with this kind of parking situation. You have to be real skinny because you get to open the door that much because you live in a place like this. Uh, pop your hood. Um, I will show you first where the, uh, the set timing connector is. It's going to be wrapped up underneath a dash like this on that harness, but on a... Um, 93, 94, and possibly a 95 too, but 95 at a different dash. There's your set timing connector right there. You gotta disconnect it, it's just a little pin thing you just pull out and uh, bada bing, bada boom. It's off. Oh, it's looking get burned there in that light a little bit. Make sure it doesn't do that, these lights get hot. Well, that's your set timing connector. But um, let's go start this thing up for a moment just to warm it up. Hey, uh, you missed it when I just started up and went. <laughs> Because I think the IAC could be fucked up on this truck too, excuse my language, but got 158 on it, original piece. Has to be clean maybe, it could be dirty. It's been idling funny. I started up too, it's really red high at first. But uh down there, you can't really see, but at the that timing, at the timing, timing mark, there we go. Right there, if you want to aim. Aim your, uh, your gun, that's just a standard um, base timing in an OVA, if you wish, I don't know how you even pronounce it. Timing light hooks onto the battery like so, red, brown, you see it blinking now, and you put it on number one cylinder. I always like to take the wire out a little bit, separate it from number two, so you're not getting a bad pickup. So it's just an inductive pickup, and if you're close to number two, you're going to be getting two cylinders, it's going to be wacky. But you gotta go shut it down and disconnect that connector first. So if you aim it out here, it's gonna be like way over to the um, the right. I mean not the left. Because it's like running at, I don't know, who knows, 18 degrees, 20 degrees. So the computer's controlling it now. But when we disconnect that connector, it's gonna be running at whatever. I think the timing might be okay on this, but the distributor bolt holes kinda wallow it out. I got an Edelbrock intake and it cracked. Well, the um, the threads cracked out at like half of it. So I've had problems in the past where it loosened on me. So I'm just going to verify that. If not, we're going to go play with the um, idle air control valve. It's really been shaking at idle. It's probably that. I'll just get this connector out. Sorry. Well, you just got to pull that tab and pull it out. So we'd be disconnected. Okay, we're going to start it up. It's going to sound all funny. Air, definitely turn the air off. Check engine light comes on, you're gonna get an EST code, no big deal. We'll go away when you plug it back in. But you hear it, it sounds totally different. It's like really, really hum. And uh, it's actually a little bit retarded, I would correct. It's running slow. It's supposed to be in that big V, we're just a little bit out of it. And the time will kick back again. So we're gonna have to move it up. That sucks. I think it sounds awesome when it's disconnected. It's loud as hell. <laughs> you hear the valves ticking too because this thing's worn out. You hear it a little bit on your truck. <laughs> to uh, loosen your distributor, I have no idea why this is so blurry, but we'll just deal with it. I use a 916 scrolls foot. And the bolts is down there, somewhere hidden. You'll see it, there's a little clamp on it. But I use this to make distributor wrenches, but I found this works better. I loosened it, and um, I have a little mark on the side over there. I see it look like it did move a little bit, but I always like to mark it so I know it's the original spot in case your adjustment doesn't work out. I'm getting an oil leak in over here too. I had a Brock intake manifold before my TBI. Things very, very soft aluminum. No good. Loosen your distributor. I have no idea why this is so blurry, but just deal with it. I use a 916th crow's foot. And 
It's a bolt that's down there, somewhere hidden. You'll see it, there's a little clamp on it. But I use this to make distributor wrenches, but I found this works better. I loosened it, and um, I have a little mark on the side over there. I see it look like it did move a little bit, but I always like to mark it so I know it's the original spot in case your adjustment doesn't work out. I think I'm getting an oil leak again over here too. I have a Brock intake manifold before my TBI. Things very, very soft aluminum. Turn a little tiny bit at a time and then keep checking in with your light. And now we're at like, uh, it's probably like 3 degrees. So I gotta go back a little bit. I like to detonate with 3 degrees. Just a pain in the ass, the final adjustment. A little less bit changes it so much. But we'll get it. Uh, that looks pretty good right there, almost right in the center. Sometimes when you sock it down too, it likes to retard a little bit because you're pushing it down a little bit. This thing again, it's just, it's just screwed up. But you can't really see the light, but you're never going to be able to see it in the mark. No, it's not going to pick it up. Eh, a little bit. Still, I think a little bit retarded. It has to go up a little bit. Alright, I tighten up the stripper the best I can. Really, I gotta take this intake manifold while I'll put a Healy coil in there. But I'm not getting involved with that at this point in time. But it's running way better. Probably at like maybe two degrees, I would imagine. So you hear it. You hear the exhaust tone, it sounds better. And a little less valve stick. So that should greatly improve the performance off the line. It was getting really, really sluggish. But before you um, turn it off, always tighten that bolt. So when you turn it back on, it'll loose. It'll move a little bit. You won't screw up your reading. But yeah, you should really do it when the engine's hot too. But this engine's not very hot. Let's see how it is. If not, we'll screw with it again. Connected my connector again. You see, it's running a lot better. Bit of gas and once they rev up before I hit it. it. Should be good for a while. Again, I gotta take that manifold off. Should just take this whole engine like this. Out. This thing's worn out. Alright, now we're gonna uh did that, show you how to do it real easy. Now we're gonna clean that throttle body on the IAC valve before uh, people come around and start me. I don't get reported. Still only got it fixed. What you gotta do too, um, you really should, but I don't never do it, so I gotta reset everything. Just connect the battery, so it resets the ECM, because it goes through its whole timing change again. Because when you set the timing, sometimes it runs pretty good for like 200 miles, and 200 miles later, it's back to the same old whatever. But this thing, having timing issues on it, new chain, that thing still moves around. I don't know what, what it is, unless that bolt hole really is wallowing out when it gets hot, it expands, distributor slips back a little bit, and then boom. It wasn't that retarded, I would say maybe one, two degrees, but that's enough for it to feel pretty sluggish. At zero degrees, these engines feel pretty sluggish, so I usually bump them up one to two degrees, and um, it helps a little bit with the performance. Another thing too, you know when the engine's hot, it's a good time to check the timing. When the upper radiator hose is hot, that's how you know you're getting cooling through it. If you don't do it when that happens, you get an accurate reading. Because here, it's like 90 degrees today in December, so it's no problem. But if you're doing this when it's 1 degree, you know, you better let the thing warm up. But I got this k intake. We're going to take this off and probably make another video. But that's how you set your timing. Hope it helps someone. It's real simple on these trucks. These timing lights, they're not so hot. And better to get an adjustable one. This is just for base timing. But these are like... Maybe like 30 bucks. I get this for 20 bucks used. Still works. And um, it also, it's also good for checking spark in any of these engines. You just plug it up the same. If you get spark on that cylinder, it's going to blink. So it's a good tool for that as well. Um, yeah, you just got to hook the inductive pickup to the wire. So that's how you do it. We'll leave uh, $400 worth of tools right there. <laughs> leave. Nah, take this thing for a ride. 
dry as hell. I don't have the air on because I'm just testing it without the air. But it burns rubber a little bit off the line. And um, I still got a high RPM. Uh, see? I still got a little high RPM. Um, it pings. A high RPM. Tink, 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 tink. I don't know why. It could be because the valves are screwed up. I don't know. Because uh, the valve guides are really leaking down and maybe oil's getting into the cylinders. Because those plugs I pulled out they were very, very nasty last time. And you know, oil, oil and um, 87 octane, you're going to be lowering your fuel octane. So it could be pinging. But also, um, what else was I going to add? Maybe it's running lean. I got to hook that uh, scan tool to it, or the laptop.